দর্শক সবাইকে আমন্ত্রণ জানাচ্ছি দি আমেরিকান সেন্টার এবং দেশ টিভির একদম নতুন আয়োজন দি আমেরিকান সেন্টার গড়ি সম্প্রীতি বিল্ডিং ব্রিজেস এই কাজটাই আমেরিকান সেন্টার করে থাকে লাইব্রেরি সার্ভিসের মাধ্যমে ছাত্রদের বিদেশে পড়তে যাওয়ার মাধ্যমে আর এছাড়াও সারা বছর এক্সচেঞ্জ প্রোগ্রামের মাধ্যমে আমেরিকান সেন্টার যেটা আপনারা জানেন আমেরিকান অ্যাম্বেসির একদম অপোজিটে অবস্থিত বারিধারা জে ব্লকে নতুন বাজারের কাছে সেখানে যে কেউ চাইলে এসব সার্ভিস নিতে পারেন আমেরিকান সেন্টার ইউএস এম্বেসি ঢাকার একটা অংশ আর এই আমেরিকান সেন্টার এসব কার্যক্রম যিনি সামনে থেকে নেতৃত্ব দেন তিনি হচ্ছেন ইউএস অ্যাম্বাসেডার ড্যান মুজিনা আমরা জানি যে তিনি মার্কিন রাষ্ট্রদূত কিন্তু তারপরেও তাকে অনেকে বেশি চিনেন বাংলাদেশ প্রেমী হিসেবে আজকে তিনি আমাদের আমন্ত্রণ জানিয়েছেন তার বাসায় তার সাথে কথা বলবো আসুন আমার সাথে Hello sir. Oh, I'm uh, really glad you came to see uh, me today. So thank you very much for inviting. You have a nice house and you're looking great uh, in a Punjabi. Oh, this is my most favorite Punjabi. I'm glad you like it. I put this on for you. How many Punjabis do you have, sir? I am embarrassed to say I had almost 35. Wow. And uh, see I'm getting ready to pack up and I, I can't take 35 Punjabis to the United States because we have a small house, really cute, old house, but small. I can't have 35 Punjabis, so I'm giving them away to my friends. But your house in Bangladesh has lots of memories. I love this house. I love this house. It's just, th this, is, this is not a house. It's not a residence. This is a home. We live here. And what I like about this house is it reflects grace and me. This is us. This is not like a formal place designed by somebody sitting in Washington. This is designed by us. Yes, sir. I see a lot of... Uh, oh, look at my... Oh, these are... Oh, I love these things. This is Christmas time, you know. Yes, and these are... Uh, this is a, a collection of Santa Clauses. I have a whole collection of Santa Clauses, which I love. And we only use them at Christmas time. And then we put them away. And my mother... Uh, who's now 93 years old, but she loves Christmas, and I love Christmas just like my mother. So my mother gave us these Santa Claus, uh, only one a year for like 30, 40 years. We have Santa Clauses all over the place, and they're all from my mother. Look at this one here. This is a really elegant Santa Claus. So, and my children grew up with these Santa Clauses. Oh, I have to show you something. Please, sir. I have to tell you about this. This is something so special to me. This, this Santa Claus, see this Santa Claus here? My grandma Gutchak, my mother's mother, painted this. Oh, it must be maybe 100 years ago. No, not quite, maybe 90 years ago. She painted this. And this has been part of every Christmas of my life. So this is probably the most special Santa Claus you have. This is one of the most special things in my whole life. And one time I got in big trouble with my wife, Grace. I, I said, I don't know why I said this. I said, you know, Grace, if the house were burning down and I could save only one thing, I said, Grace, I'm not sure if I'd save you or my Santa Claus. <laughs> so what was, was the reaction, funny. sir? It, uh, she was not amused. <laughs> she didn't find that funny. I thought it was funny. But anyway, so I've never said that again. That was not a good thing to say. But uh, I'm not sure in real life. But don't tell her. Uh, I love this thing, and my grandma. So when I pick this up, uh, it just floods with memories. I'm 65 years old, so I maybe remember 60 Christmases. And so you have uh, lots of memories um, in Bangladesh. Uh, I remember in one of your speeches, uh, you said that uh, when you were leaving Bangladesh back in 2001, oh. so when the plane took off, you saw your, your living behind the, your yes. roots. And so now 13 years, past and now it's time to say yeah. goodbye. How difficult it is for you to say goodbye. The story you tell from June 7, 2001 is a true story. Because on that day, Grace and I, we lived over in Baridar, Road 3. And we went out in the yard and I had a shovel and we were shoveling like this to get our roots out. <laughs> Because every country in the world where we live, we love all our countries. And the day we leave, we go in the yard and we dig up our roots and then I have a plastic bag, stick them in the plastic bag and we just go away. Everything's fine. June 7, 2001, I'm in the yard, <laughs> like this. 
I couldn't get them out. I said, Grace, I can't get the roots out. And she says, she's going like this. We got to go, we got to go, we got to go. The airplane's going to go. So we went. The roots were connected. And so we went. We got on the airplane. And this true story. And Grace sat by the window. And I was seat seated next to her. And she tapped me. She looked. And I looked out the window. And there were our roots. Stretching, 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 stretching. Ten thousand miles. They never came out of the ground. And those roots pulled us back. And on November 19, 2011, we came back. And this time as ambassador, which was my dream, my ultimate dream come true. We came back. So it's always difficult to say goodbye. And uh, I've said this uh, to our viewers that your love for Bangladesh is unconditional. And it's not a one-sided one -side love affair. Bangladesh loved you back. You, you have visited 64 districts. Oh. There must be one favorite. That is politically extremely <laughs> dangerous question. Here's how I answer that question. I love most the district I most recently visited. And that district is uh, Pavna. Okay. I was just there. And, and I had been there before, so I had visited earlier. Uh, I just love Pavna so much because it reminds me of my home state of Iowa. Iowa is exactly the size of Bangladesh, and Iowa, like much of Bangladesh, is extremely fertile soil, extremely rich agriculturally. And Pavna's like that. I don't know if you've been there. You, everywhere you look, you just see all these uh, rich agricultural production. And, and really progressive farmers. And so I said, I must go back to Pavna. And so we went back. We, I had no time. I, this is crazy. I have no time to do this. I said, rent a helicopter. So we rent a helicopter. Went out there, and I reconnected with the wonderful, award-winning, most progressive farmers of Bangladesh. Those farmers, you know what I told those farmers? I, I had a meeting with them. And I don't know, maybe there's 20 or 30 of them. And I stood before them and I said, I know your name. I'd never seen the person. Your name is Ken. And then I looked at the farmers I knew. And I knew their names and they knew I knew their name. I said, and your name is Ken. Oh, and you're Ken. And you back there, you're Ken. I said, that's your name. Ken is my father, was my father who died. Uh, and he was uh, very minimally educated. Uh, he could read or write. Uh, but he was extremely progressive, always progressive, always doing new agricultural things on our farm, always cutting edge. So cutting edge, I remember as a little boy, all these people who come to our farm, PhDs, they come from all over the world, and there they are, and they're taking notes. Here's my dad, uneducated. I never saw him read a book. He could read, never saw him read a book. And all these big people <laughs> writing like that. And I said to these farmers in Pavna, I said, you're Ken because you know, you maybe you, you didn't have so much formal education, but you've had the best education in the world. Because I know what they're doing, the research they're doing, they're grafting on trees, they're doing all sorts of scientific research with controls and everything. They don't read that in a book, they have that in their head. And I said, you, you're, you are my dad. And I am like those uh, big people with, uh, with all their PhDs. I don't have a PhD. But I'm here, and literally, I'm taking notes of what you say. It's so exciting. And I said, I'm here only because I think you are the most exciting people in Bangladesh. I love those farmers. Sir, thank you very much, but we will have to take a short break. Dashuk, at the beauty of the Yachi, Kinda with the Shatakben, Karun Amrajakun Piro Tajbo, Tokun Amrajanbo, Ambassador Dan Mozinner, favorite Bangladeshi food ki. I'm the Shati Thakben.
সবাইকে আমন্ত্রণ জানাচ্ছি দি আমেরিকান সেন্টার গড়ি সম্প্রীত অনুষ্ঠানে একদম ব্র্যান্ড নিউ শো এবং সাথে আছেন একজন স্পেশাল গেস্ট অ্যাম্বাসেডর ড্যান মুজিনা স্যার উই ওয়ার টকিং অ্যাবাউট দি সয়েল অফ বাংলাদেশ উই অল নো দ্যাট পিপল বাংলাদেশি পিপল আর ভেরি হসপিটেবল দ্য সয়েল ইজ সফট অ্যান্ড সো আর দ্য পিপল বাট দ্য ফুড ইজ রিয়েলি স্পাইসি how did you deal with that what is your favorite uh, bangladeshi dish by the way my favorite food oh my goodness just this morning uh, i think i was a chittagonian in an earlier life because <laughs> I, i so love chittagonian food and i had kalabuna oh. kalabuna for breakfast i think someday i am going to be so rich because i'm going to steal this recipe i'm not going to give any royalty no no respect i'm going to steal it and i'm going to go to america and i'm going to introduce 320 million people or everybody's going to eat kal kalabuna and i will be rich i love that food you know let me tell you something uh, as you know i was here before uh, uh, 1998 to 2001 and then i left and then came back and uh, people always say oh what do you see different let me tell you something about food because you know, and I think you said, uh, I've been to all the, the districts. Oh my, I don't think you can find one village, one place in Bangladesh where you cannot find oranges 12 months a year. Oranges, 12 months a year. Now right now they're Bangladeshi oranges, but most of the time they're from Bhutan, they're from India, they're from China, everywhere, apples, everywhere grapes about 10 months a year you buy grapes everywhere everywhere the most remote place in Shatkira or way up in Panchagar or way down in Coxus there you find these things this is amazing this is amazing and what this speaks to is the growing deepening prosperity of this country it's real so now let's talk about music we have heard uh, you're staying up late because you attended the Bengal uh, Classical Music Festival uh, and you have attended many concerts here. You have you've been to the Lalon Shrine. So what's your take on uh, Bangladeshi music? One of the highlights of my life is attending the South Asia Classical Music Festival. This year is the third one. I've gone all five nights. See these big bags under my eyes? <laughs> I, I, last night, every night this week, I've slept uh, two and a half hours because I can't, I have to go and it's impossible to leave. Last year, I went all four nights. And the first year, I went three of four nights. The first night, I didn't know. I didn't go because I didn't know anything about it. And then people are saying, well, why didn't you go? I said, what is it? I never heard of it. And they, ex they ex told me then, then, of course, I was there for the second, third, and fourth night. I have never missed a night. And sometimes I come home at 4 o'clock in the morning. But my Bangladeshi friends, they sleep till 11 o'clock or noon. I have to be at work before 8 o'clock. So uh, anyway, I think I'm a little bit crabby sometimes. <laughs> but oh, it's so rich. It's so rich. And you know what I like most? I love the vocals. The vocal, we have nothing like that uh, in, in, our, in American culture, where, where these uh, performers use their, their, uh, their voice like an like a instrument with so many notes. It's just mesmerizing, mesmerizing. So thank you very much for your kind words. This is Holly Decision. Uh, I guess you have a Christmas tree somewhere in your house. Well, well before we go, I, ha I have to share something here. This is a very important part of the Christmas tradition because Christmas is all about giving to others. And there are different ways to do it, but one very traditional way is through what's called a stocking. And so here, we have two stockings here. These and they put the gifts inside? Yeah, little gifts. One, is, this is for my daughter. We have used this since she was born in 1979. And this is for my son. He was born in 1983. And uh, we put their little gifts in there. And uh, we will uh, later give these to our children. And, they, and so they will carry forward these traditions. Because they remember these as long as they can remember. As I've told, sir, like so many memories around this house. 
Yeah, everything here is a memory for us. So here I have to show you our Christmas tree. This is the most important thing for Christmas. And, and this tree right here, which my wife and I decorated uh, and we had help from our staff so we had Muslims and Hindus uh, uh, Buddhists and Christians all decorating this tree it's so much fun but everything on this tree has a story these are not just decorations you buy at a store these all every piece tells a story look at this piece right here or this one right here look at this that ornament my mother, who is now 93 years old, hung that ornament on her tree as a little girl. And then it was old because it, it had come down from her grandparents. So maybe that's over 100 years old. And every Christmas uh, it's hung. And then my mother gave that to me. It is so precious. And, and so I hang this cause, and I hang that up there. Uh, this ornament right here, my wife Grace made when she was six years old. And we this hang is that. Very old, so like yeah. all these items. I'll, I'll be sure to tell her that you think she's very old. <laughs> uh, she will appreciate that. Uh, and here is, uh, look at this. Uh, this is a uh, crocheted by my great aunt Ruth. And there, see these, these. Uh, these are, oh, I love these. Uh, but my great aunt Ruth made those, uh, what, I don't know, 50 years ago, 60 years ago. And then they're gifts to me. This one, my wife and I bought when we got married in 1971. And, and so that's a very special one. This one's from the White House here. Uh, I had a friend in, who was working in the White House, and so he gave me that. Oh. And, oh, here, this one is from the Marines, the United States Marines. And uh, my son-in-law uh, is a Marine. And so that's, that tells his story. Uh, and I'll take this one off right here. Oh, I hope I don't break it. Look at this. Now, this one we gave to my daughter when she was born, 1979. And so this is the story of my daughter's life right here. So anyway, every, every uh, ornament on this tree tells a story. Amazing stories. Uh, sir, I hate to do this. Uh, we are at the end of our show. And it was a pleasure talking to you. Oh, severe. Thank you for coming into my house and sharing Christmas with me a little bit of my uh, life. Uh, thank you very much, sir. But before we leave, uh, I would request you uh, to give a parting message for our American Center Library members, oh. Education USA members, and uh, to the youth of Bangladesh. I believe in Bangladesh. I believe with my heart and my soul in Bangladesh. And I urge uh, all Bangladeshis, but especially young people, the youth, the next generation, the up and coming generation, to believe in this country and to give to this country and build this country. And the best thing you can do is, is to educate yourself as much as you possibly can. Educate yourself in the broadest meaning of the word uh, and, and really try to develop those skills that can make Bangladesh ever stronger, ever richer, ever better. That's, I, I urge people to do that. And as you work to educate yourself, I hope you will consider options for pursuing education in the United States. Uh, because uh, America, education in America, I'm a product of that education, teaches some things like how to identify problems and solve problems and overcome problems, to build, to build, to build. That's the main lesson students learn in America. And it's, it's a lesson that changes everything. So believe in Bangladesh, build Bangladesh, the national anthem speaks of Shonar Bangla, Shonar Bangla, and I believe in Shonar Bangla, and Shonar Bangla is what you will build. Mm -hmm.